On this evening's show, we host the author of Yes, We Can. Robert Katz spent three weeks of his life in a coma where he experienced a near-death experience. We have an absolutely exhilarating show for you folks tonight here on Rob's Inner Circle. We have another great show lined up for you tonight, so don't go anywhere. Stay right where you are. We'll be right back. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Rob's Inner Circle Broadcasting live on my personal Facebook page on the Bobby Short Shorts YouTube channel and on the Rob's Inner Circle Twitch account. I want to give out a huge shout out to my good friend and producer, Rob's Inner Circle, the amazing Jenny Duhaim. And another huge shout out to the equally amazing podcast techie working very hard behind the scenes, none other than Patty Saragosa. We got three honorable mentions tonight on this show. We're going to start off with Mr. Jordan Kilgannon, the slam dunk, Duncan Dunker, while he's in the latest Basket Trio commercial that is currently airing. Also starring in the commercial, his two brothers, Grant and Chase, his girlfriend, Cheyenne, and Justin Just Fly Darlington. We go down to the land of Down Under, where... Spike and Kimberly Spencer are proud parents for the second time around. That's right. They welcomed eight-pound baby Colton Christopher uh, Spencer on July 1st at 4.35 Australian time. We got some local news going on around here, and that's a local Montreal filmmaker, Teresa Pichano's film, Mate and Date. Well, it's received a selection at the 2021 Canada's Yes, Let's Make a Film Festival. So, folks, on behalf of myself, Jenny, and Patty, we would love to congratulate you. And good work, and hey, all the best to you. Thank you. Thank you so much, guys. And you guys were guests on our show. You are val very valuable to us and to the rest of the audience. We want to give you a reminder that Daily Struggles is up and running and it is on the Rise Up TV channel on Roku. And you can get the Roku stick on Amazon for as little as $30. That's three zero thirty dollars $30. And for those of you who would prefer to have it uh, on your smart devices, you can download the app on your smart device, either through Google Play or through your Apple Store. Uh, Vinny, Vinny the Hat Gargano, also known as Vincent Gargano. Well, we have something, a collaborative effort going on with him. And uh, for those of you who are interested in getting our amazing merch, you can get that at our merch store. You can go through Vinny, and that is on the site, at the following site, 514brandingco.com. That's 514brandingco.com. And you can get... All of the collectibles for Rob's Inner Circle. You get the new number out of the box on there as well. Esther's Breeze and the Daily Struggles web series, the sitcom. We invite you to go on to the Bobby Short Shorts YouTube channel. Click onto the playlist and go check things out over there. You Like for tonight, on the show tonight, you want to go into Rob's Inner Circle, go on to our past broadcast and to the one tonight that's going to be going on a half hour later. We invite you to go on. You want, we want you to comment. Give us uh, some uh, uh, a nice blue thumb, thumbs up. You want to share. You want to subscribe to Bobby Short Shorts. That's right. Subscribe to Bobby's Short Shorts. Best thing you'll ever done. And you also want to hit that notification bell because every time there's a new publication or a new production coming out, you will be the first to know. So it is time once again to slip into our weekly ritual. That's a time that we actually sit back, wind back, wind down, throw our feet in the corner on the table, relax, inhale, 
Man, that feels good. Exhale, relax, sit back, and let us carry the load. Folks, it's showtime. It is time to bring on our guest. Our guest is standing by. He's an amazing gentleman with an amazing story to tell. A very smart gentleman, a man who has accomplished so much for himself and for others, who's made life better for everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, here's the star attraction in Rob's Inner Circle, Mr. Robert Katz. Robert Hello. King. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Rob's Inner Circle. So nice to have you on, Rob. So glad to be here. Hey, listen, by the way, on behalf of myself and everybody here at Rob's Inner Circle, including Patty and Jenny, we would like to wish you a happy birthday. Thank you so much. And Don't also a... Different. I'm sorry? Don't feel any different. Okay, but you must feel different because you are, as of July 3rd, a new retiree. That must make you feel uh, uh, not true. guilty, better. Benefits now. <laughs> So, Rob, hey, welcome to our show. This is going to be Thank an exciting you. show. Uh, you have such an amazing story to tell us. So without further ado, um, listen, you've been a quadru uh, quadriplegic since the age of nine. So can you tell us what happened exactly? Well, I was very uh, young. Uh, when I was growing up, I was like a normal kid uh, running around, had my bike and uh, played with my friends in the backyard, you know, G.I. Joe and all that. And um, when I was at camp one day, I was, we used to go away to uh, summer camp. And um, I used to jog a lot. I used to run around in the, in the, on the roads and behind the camp on the dirt roads. One day I had a very bad pain in the back of my neck and my left leg started dragging. Uh, I didn't think very much about it. And, um, you know, time wore on and, Things got a little bit worse. My legs started getting a little worse. My left arm started to drag a bit, and my mother got a bit concerned. So uh, she uh, took me over to see a lot of specialists and uh, finally diagnosed me with uh, a tumor on the back of my spine, uh, something called uh, C6, C7 level, which is just about the, on the back of your head, just below on the spine. And uh, they didn't really know what it was in those days. Of course, they didn't have very much technology. So uh, they had to do some exploratory surgery. And in 1967, they opened me up and found that they had found a very major, um, very, very major tumor. So they just basically sewed me back up and sent me home, told my mother just to forget about it. But uh, being that the way she was, she kind of insisted that they operate on me. And they, they, the surgeons were really against it. They really did not want to touch me. Uh, they said that, you know, probably wouldn't have a chance. I probably would die on the table. But they went ahead and did the surgery. And when I woke up, uh, I, was, I was still alive, still functioning, but I could not feel anything from my chest down. So uh, from that point on, I just I made a decision to to either die or continue on with life. So I just decided that I was going to make the best of it. And that's what I did. Went to school, got a diploma, have a master's degree in uh, criminology, went on and got a degree in, uh, in criminology, like I said, and uh, uh, with a minor in, in uh, computer science. And uh, went, on, went on and had a terrific career in I, as an IT specialist. So, Bob, we're going to get back into that a little bit in more detail. But uh, so you're, yeah. you go to the hospital, uh, you go for an operation. Next thing you know, you don't feel anything from your legs on and all that. Um, yeah. That, that must, been, that must have been down. like a, of course, that must have been like a, a shock. So... Uh, from that point on, how did you reorganize your life? Oh, kind of just went ahead and, you know, just from day to day, uh, just organized myself by, um, by setting myself up uh, with a special bed, uh, with a special mattress, an overhead uh, sling to bring me in and out of bed. 
a special wheelchair that uh, an electric wheelchair had actually had one of the first electric wheelchairs in Montreal. Uh, my dad actually brought it in from the States. So I nice. was, you know, pretty lucky there. Um, yeah, I had a lot of advantages. Thank God my parents were able to, um, to support me in that way. So yeah, I had a lot of special equipment. And now uh, a lot of the equipment that I have is uh, pr provided for me by the government. Yeah. Okay, and so, um, of course, there are many challenges that came about with this because uh, now all of a sudden, um, you know, there's a there's a fact that you have to go to school and all that. So Boy, yeah, with, with all that, school, yeah. yeah, the thought that comes to my mind that, uh, you know, at one point, were you homeschooled? I had a tutor at one point uh, when I was first at home because I was pretty sick, you know, and uh, this tutor would... He taught me all these um, classic Greeks, Greek uh, classics, actually. So I read a lot and I uh, was taught a lot at home. And um, at that point, I did go back to school. I went to the Mackay Center on the Carry uh, here in Montreal. And uh, from that point, uh, I, I went up until about the uh, 11th grade. But then I could not matriculate because they wouldn't allow me to actually write the exam. They wouldn't actually let me write the exam. They had they said I said, well, I could do it verbally. They said, no, you have to write the exam. So I said, no, I'm not gonna, I can't do that. So my mom actually uh, got me into a private school in, uh, in Florida. And um, I went to school in Florida, got my degrees in Florida. The state. I was there from 1969 until 1983. Yeah, you you've uh, you've accomplished many things in Florida, and we'll be getting back to that uh, yeah. as well. Sure. Um, because uh, you're also a pioneer in uh, something to do with the transit system, but we won't talk about that right away. We we, we don't want to spoil the fun. We're going to be getting to that uh, a, sure. a little shortly. Recently on the show, we had uh, Michael Ankers, and we also had uh, David Sean. And uh, there are two young fellows that are, um, uh, they've been diagnosed with, um, what do you call it, the uh, autism. And of okay. course, yeah, they were treated a little bit different at school, you know, after that was, uh, you know, that came out. As for you, Robert, uh, when, you know, you came in, uh, you went to school afterwards, after the operation, were That's you right. perceived a little bit differently from your, your classmates? Oh, not and the at people all, there? not at all. I was the popular guy at school. Oh, I was the one with the van and I was the one with all the friends and uh, everybody, I would pick up everybody in my van and I was the guy I had a, a private driver. So we'd all pile into my van at the end of school and we'd go and we'd get sandwiches at the local sandwich shop and uh, we'd be going around to movies. We'd be, be going, figuring out, well, what are we going to do tonight? I would say to Scott, my friend Scott, and uh, he would say, I don't know, what do you want to do tonight? And he says, okay, let's go pick up all the girls. So we pick up all the girls and we take <laughs> off on the van and we go around town and we do stuff. You know, we go to concerts. We did all the normal stuff that everybody else did. So uh, you, you must have had you must have had a I was huge a party fan. guy. I was a okay. party guy. So you had a huge fan club, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was really popular in high school. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So you and your wife uh, have been married for 22 yep. years. That's right. Uh, okay. my, my wife and I actually were on our third. I'm on my third marriage. Okay. I was married twice before. Didn't work out too well. But, uh, you know, third time's a charm, right? So, so uh, yeah, uh, absolutely. Because, you know, it, it doesn't mean because it doesn't work the first, second time that there's no chance, you know, for another crack at it, right? I don't give up easy. <laughs> You're a fighter. <laughs> I don't give up that easy, no, no. T tell us, what is Pina's background? Oh, Pina's a wonderful lady. She has a great background. She's, she's professional. She worked at the hospital, the Montreal General, as a uh, receptionist. And um, um, sorry, I got that wrong. Um, yes. Yeah, no, she, she worked at the Montreal General. And uh, she also had her own company. 
uh, as a uh, quite a large company, in fact, about a uh, hundred and fifty or more employees, wow. um, caregiver employees, uh, like a placement agency, and uh, and she actually worked as a um, as a medical secretary as well for many doctors in the local area here. Yeah. Okay, so you're both authors. Did you speak about your early life and career in your memoir? Yes, we can. Yes, yes, I spoke about my diff different different careers, the different companies that I went to. Uh, actually, spoke about how I I had a lot of discrimination against me. Actually, while while uh, for jobs, uh, people would look at me and they would say, "Whoa, whoa, whoa!" Uh, you know, we will we'll we'll get, we'll get back to you. Okay. Uh, well, I, got, I had a lot of that. We'll get back to you, kind of stuff. And um, a lot of jobs, uh, they would turn me down right, right at the get go. And um, so you know, it was it wasn't easy. And uh, a lot of jobs, I had to fight my way through the door, and, and actually worked uh, as a volunteer for many jobs. And uh, that's how I built my cred credentials uh, as a volunteer. So your memoir, yes, we can. Where, where, uh, where is it that we can purchase it? Because folks, the, this book is absolutely amazing. It is a story of courage, a story of triumph, a must-have book. Bob, tell us where we can get this book. Tell the audience. At the moment, uh, it's actually uh, gone. Is going through um, a, a, a publishing company uh, in the states. So it can be purchased actually online uh, at Amazon.com, uh, and if you you just uh, have to um, uh, search uh, Pina. Pina is the first uh, search uh, criteria. So if you go Pina, Pina Cats, and Robert Cats, uh, we, yes, we can. It'll come up on uh, Amazon. So we apologize for the mistype. We have Amazon.ca. Is it available at Amazon.ca as well? Amazon.com, I believe, isn't it? Yes, Amazon.com. Okay, so folks, uh, disregard Amazon.ca. It's Amazon.com. Okay, uh, Robert, do you have any special requirements to start off your day, your daily routine? Uh, yeah, I do. Sure, a lot of, lot of requirements, actually. Uh, first thing in the morning, I have somebody that comes in. I have an attendant nurse uh, that shows up at a specific time. She'll come in and she'll get me prepared. I get me dressed, get me up in my chair. Uh, I have a routine that I go through. Uh, I don't want to go into too much detail because it's uh, uh -huh. it's a little bit complicated. But um, I basically get she gets me prepared for the day, gets me up in my chair. And gets me ready to go and then once i'm in my chair she'll help me get to eat because right now i had trouble feeding myself i've lost a lot of use of my arms oh. and that's one of the reasons i've had to retire from my career uh before i was able to type on the computer now i i use mostly voice recognition to do all my typing so uh, i have lost some abilities Okay. And um, then in the evening, it's just a reverse of everything else to get back into bed and to, to get comfortable, uh, to get set up. And in my bed, I have a special bed, a special mattress that prevents bed sores. I also have a special setup for my uh, television, which I can control through a, a what's called the sif and puff, which controls the lights control the bed equipment, control the, uh, the bed itself, actually, up and down on the bed, and control everything in my room. So I can control the TV, for instance, change channels, do a lot of things, a heater, turn the heater on and off. It's pretty automated. I have my whole room that's automated, so I can do uh, almost everything from my bed. Yeah. Is this the type of stuff that you devise yourself with um, no, your iPhone? No, no, I got it through the rehab center. Uh, they they helped me to uh, to put together a lot of this equipment. They have a lot of good tech tech people that uh, help me with this. Yeah. 
Okay, we uh, inform the audience, folks who are out there, please feel free to ask questions to Robert. Uh, he's going to be more than uh, uh, willful to answer your questions. He's an amazing man with many, many accomplishments. Um, there's just so much to talk about. If you get the book, yes, we can. You'll be, be able to see all that he's done. He's just such an amazing story. Uh, Rob, uh, you when you were in Florida... You were the pioneer behind the wheelchair lift for the transit system, the Broward, uh, the Broward Co County transit system that extends from Fort Lauderdale, uh, Sunrise, Florida, all and encompasses uh, what is it, Hollywood, Florida? Is Hollywood, it Miami as well? Yeah, yeah it's well, actually, it's a place called Davie, Florida. Davie. It's a little bit out in the sticks, but okay. that's where that's where my where my school was, uh, and basically what happened was I was influenced. Uh, well, I was involved, a lot involved with the student government, and I, I was, uh, became uh, an advocate for the disabled, uh, whereas I was um, running for council, student council, became actually the president of the student government, and uh, I was very popular on campus, and I had a lot of people that behind me, uh, this very, this gentleman who was a pretty interesting fellow. He uh, he was blind. His name was Richard Black, a tremendous uh, outgoing guy who was very involved po politically and got me involved politically. And we had um, a little demonstration, if you want to call it that, where we blocked in a Broward County bus in the campus. And we had about three to 400 students blocking in a bus. And the idea was that we would um, encourage uh, them to provide us with a meeting with the commissioner of the bus uh, system in order to promote accessibility for the disabled in the bus system. Because at the time, the bus systems were not accessible at all. And as you, can, as you know today, most of the buses in the city are accessible. And that was, that was all part of, the, uh, of what we did. I mean, we really encouraged that. And we were able to get a meeting with the, uh, the people that counted. And uh, this went on and actually went to school uh, up north in Gainesville, a place called the University of Florida, and was involved more with, uh, with on a state level uh, where we were involved with the governor's office, Governor Graham, Governor Graham's office, whereas we, uh, we were um, invited to be advocates, uh, uh, labor advocates for the governor's office. Uh, and uh, we were fighting for biting voting rights for the disabled because at the time, a lot of the voting booths were not accessible. So we were trying to push for that. And uh, we did a couple of things that were not that kosher, but we won't go into that right now. <laughs> I do so, talk about it in the book, though. So uh, that must have been amazing. You had 300 people backing you up. Yeah. And you blocked the bus. And I could just imagine the poor bus driver was going through his mind. Because oh, man, they were crazy. The, the, the administrator <laughs> ran out and was begging me to stop this this demonstration <laughs> she was sweating it was about 150 degrees outside and she was sweating oh my she god said to me, please stop this stop this and i said i can't it's out of my control and uh it was like quite quite the scene i'll tell you and, and how long did it take to get the meeting with the transit officials oh they met us right away the next day oh wow oh, so yeah. bob you know what we when we want things to move around here right i know where to go yeah. <laughs> Call Robert Katz. Yeah. Make well, it happen. I'm not as big of an advocate as I used to be, but uh, yeah. <laughs> you were telling me uh, backstage that you, we don't want to give too much away because you have these amazing stories in your book, but you, yeah. just a bit of a teaser. You had some sure. amazing experiences with some of the caregivers that were taking oh, yeah. care of you. Uh, sure. Just tease the audience a little bit here. Uh, sure. Give us a prime example. I had a caregiver who came over to take, take care of me. And I hired him out of the newspaper. I didn't know who I was hiring. And he was an older gentleman and seemed quite nice to me. 
And uh, after one week, he was with me. He went to the store and bought like 12 bottles of whiskey. Oh. And I found that a bit peculiar, but I said, what the heck? You know, I was <laughs> a teenager at the time. So I started drinking with him. We had whiskey and we both got a little bit smashed. And, uh, <laughs> and then on the weekends, I would go and stay with my sister. And then when I came back one weekend, he was gone. And I said, heck, well, I didn't know. I don't know what happened. So I said, well, you know, and I, I just stayed with my sister for a while. And then I went back home. I hired somebody new. And a few weeks later, I get a knock on the door. And it's an FBI agent holding up the <laughs> sign. He says, uh, I said, yeah, sure. What can I do for you? He says, well, I'm looking for this guy. Do you know who this is? I said, yeah. He's been looking after me for the last two weeks. Oh, my God. He says, well, he's a bank robber from New York City. And we're out of trail. <laughs> well, that's nuts. And uh, we were just about to catch him. So he, yeah. had just, just a le he had just left a, a couple of days before. They were right on his tail. Oh, my God. Well, yeah. and, and how did you feel, like, you know, after all of this happened here, they tell, some, telling yourself, like, a bank robber was taking care of me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so what's the moral of the story here? You, you can, can still bag. Well, the moral of the story is everybody has a heart. Yeah. And uh, there are some bad people that, try to turn over a leaf, you know, try to turn over a leaf. Because, uh, yeah, I've had many stories like this. So we can get uh, many more of these stories here in your book. Yes, oh, yeah. we oh, can. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Okay, so, yeah, so that's pretty interesting. I guess that must be one of the lighter stories because you probably have some spicier stories in there as well, right? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, listen, part of the reason though, why you uh, moved to Florida with your family is because the weather was warmer and it was more favorable. Uh, did it have that much effect on your health when you moved to Florida? It sure did. It sure did. The salt air and the, um, the, the, the warmth warmed my bones. And I'm, I'm always kind of cold inside. And uh, I always felt good in the sun. I'm a kind of a sun worshiper, you know. And when I was, um, I just felt good. The salt air made me feel terrific. Yeah. Okay. So you went to Florida and you said you got a degree in criminology. At the, right. And which department, which branch in criminology? Because there's a whole bunch of branches. Was it like a coroner? Or what was it exactly? Well, I was involved with the prison system, actually. Okay. Okay, so yeah. uh, what, what is it that you studied uh, exactly in the prison system? Well, the prison system was, uh, I did my thesis on uh, accessibility of the prison system and uh, how it affected the disabled. Uh, like, for instance, if you become a criminal and you would be involved in a crime, uh, how would they put you in prison? Would they put you in the, in the general population or would you be in, in a hospital setting? So that's basically what I wrote my thesis on. Uh, one of our audience members by the name of Edna Katz Silver. I don't know if that rings a bell for you. Yeah, that's my mother. There you go. Edna Katz Silver, the amazing Edna. Edna, nice to have you on the show. Thank you for tuning in. Of course, you're going to tune in. Bobby's on the show. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, Rob, your mom says, talk about your travels. Oh, my. Yes, that's a good, that's a good topic. Uh, I spent a lot of time uh, in the summers. Uh, I was very fortunate to be able to get um, uh, to go with my sister to Europe. And uh, we went to uh, France and uh, we spent a lot of time in, in, in Europe, uh, Germany, uh, Italy, northern Italy, a place called the Yawasa, uh, and Ireland as well, um, England and France course and um, we we we, um, we had some nice episodes there where we had spent one uh, evening with some uh, I'll tell you a quick story yeah go ahead we spent, we spent uh, evening with some with some guys from Belgium and we got really really wasted on some very excellent beer and uh, <laughs> You're a party animal, Bobby. <laughs> I think so, yeah. At that time I was, yeah. <laughs> and uh, we, 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 we got home at around 5 in the morning, and the whole room was spinning, so my sister put my foot on the floor in order to stop the room from spinning. And, uh, of course, at 6 o'clock they came, and they got us. the guy came into the room, okay, time to go. 
because we were on this tour, right? So it's six o'clock in the morning. They were getting me dressed, and I'm half fucked. And they're putting me in my wheelchair and putting me on this tour bus. And I'm half asleep and half unconscious. But I went along on the tour anyway, and we're just going. And all of a sudden, the driver tells us, Hey, look at the leprechaun on the side of the road. And everybody, oh, looks, everybody looks over to see the leprechaun, you know. And I said, oh. "Why, why, why, why? <laughs> what leprechaun, you know?" Oh my God! Yeah. Well, what a crazy story. So you had a great time uh, when you were oh, traveling. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was a real trip. Hey, how about sharing another amazing story from your travels? Yeah, another amazing story from the travels. Oh my goodness. Oh, um, well, we had this guy, actually. I, I know it's, it's a little bit dirty, but I guess your audience will appreciate it. Uh, we had this guy who was very, very disabled. He, I think he had ALS, which is a very severe disease where you're kind of uh, closed in on your body and you can't really move, but your mind is very, very active. And one of his last wishes was, was to be with a woman. So we all chipped in. And we got him, we got him a prostitute. Oh no. <laughs> and we sent her up to his room. And I'm telling you, the next morning he had the biggest smile on his face. <laughs> so is that what it takes to smile when you're on vacation? Oh my God, he had a good time. <laughs> hey Rob, uh, talk to us a little bit about your uh, career as an IT, um, IT guy. Sure. I was very involved with uh, technical writing also, at the beginning of my career, uh, I was with uh, Air Canada. Uh, I helped write a lot of the programs there. Uh, I was involved with the help desk at Air Canada. I was on the help desk. Also involved with uh, Bombardier at uh, Canada Air at the time. Actually, it was called Canada Air. Then it became Bombardier afterwards. Um, we, yeah, we got involved, very involved with uh, programming mostly. So I guess you could say I was a programmer at the beginning. Uh, I moved into technical writing and at the end of my career, I was an administrator, uh, where I worked as a liaison between IT as an IT specialist and, uh, HR, which is human resources. Yeah. So I was like, a a go between, if you want to call it that, yeah. Okay, we, we just want to uh, hover over the surface a little bit um, about your book. I want to get into near death, your near death experience, which is totally amazing. But let's get yeah. into your book a little bit. Talk to us a little bit about your book. Is what uh, not exactly like word per word, but tell us what is in your book and what we can expect to get from your book and what it is that inspired you to write this book. Well, I haven't written the part about the near-death experience just yet. But if you want me to talk about that a bit, is that what you want? Well, actually, uh, right now, uh, what I'm asking you, Robert, is that what is contained inside the book? What are the contents of the book? What do, you, what do you talk about exactly? Well, in my travels, I talk about my okay. caregivers. Um, all my caregivers that took care of me. Okay. Um, I, 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 talk, I talk about employment and how I was struggling to get work and how it would go and get uh, go to interviews and be rejected by my interviewers. Um, I, I, how I met my wife and how we got involved in our relationship and how we, we uh, got together. Um, family, events. family events, yeah. How my parents were very involved with me and how they encouraged me to uh, to go forward and, and not to give up. Yeah. Okay. So this is all in your book. Yes, we yeah, can. That's okay. Right. So tell us, where did you get the inspiration to write the book? My wife. My wife inspired oh. me totally. I got to say that I had it in my mind to do this for a long time. And she really pushed me to go ahead and do it. And actually was the, was my, uh, my motivation to, to go ahead. I don't think I would have done it. I, I really don't think I would have done this without her. Okay, I owe her a great deal. You know, uh, uh, sorry, I can't hear you. The microphone just went right. Yeah, good, good stuff because having the people around us, that is what, you know, pushes us, it propels us 
to go that step further and to get things yeah. done. So uh, it's a good thing you had your wife around. And uh, obviously, um, she helped you with the book and all that. Uh, she's been my she's been my soulmate. She's been my best friend and my best. Um, I could I couldn't couldn't live without her. So, uh, Rob, uh, tell us a little bit about, without giving too much, though, uh, you know, just like hovering a little bit, just to tease the audience, right? Uh, tell us about your near-death experience. You were, you went into the hospital. Yeah. And then the next thing you know. Uh, I had a bladder infection. A bladder started, infection, okay. A bladder infection. I started right. off and I went to see the doctor and he sent me right away to the emergency room. Okay. You know? And uh, from there, it just got worse and worse and worse. And I was went into kind of like a, uh, almost like a delirium state where I, I left my body and I just wasn't, wasn't there anymore. I just sort of, uh, I, I, I ended up at first, I ended up in, in a dark, uh, kind of a demonic uh, black uh, room uh where i was avoiding evil all around me and at one point uh a, an angel appeared in front of me angel gabriel he announced himself as angel gabriel and he grabbed me around the arms and lifted me up and i saw planets all around me and i just was lifted up high uh, into another realm. That's, uh, that's the well, way I can describe it. So we're, you're in another realm. You're seeing the planets. Is it like? Yeah. Was it dark in your in uh, your vision? Was it dark or was it daytime? Yeah, uh, it was dark, and then it became light. Okay, and and where were you exactly? Were were you on like solid ground, or were you like? No, I was not on solid ground for sure. Not. I was floating. I was okay. floating. Did you feel comforted uh, while you had this experience? I was in total peace. I had no pain for the first time in my life. I had no pain at all. Okay, and you were telling me uh, that you were not in your wheelchair anymore, right? No, I was. I was floating. I was walking, floating. And uh, you also you you had a special request, and your dog had passed away. Well, it was some kind of a poodle. Yeah, his name was Spencer. Spencer, and okay. It was a white, white male poodle. Okay. Kind of a miniature poodle. And uh, I, I had missed him because he had just passed away. We had, we had to put him down because he had some medical issues. Okay. And uh, I had missed him very much and I wanted to see him again. And I, I asked God, I had, I was, I had actually speaking back and forth with what I thought was God. And I said, he asked me, do you have any special requests? And I said, yeah, I'd really like to see my dog again. And I was actually very emotional at the time. And the dog appeared and he was wagging his tail. And, and I, um, I, I patted him and he barked at me and, and, you know, he was very excited to see me too. Did it feel real when you were patting the dog? It's like Everything you know when you pat. Real. It's like you know when you pat a dog. It's actually physically you push on it and you actually yes. feel. Is that the same experience you you yes. experienced? Very tactic, very tactile experience for me. And while were you there? Did, did you have a sense of uh, control over what you can ask, or did you just like feel that you were there as a spectator? And no, it's like you weren't no, in full no, control. I wasn't a spectator. I was really interacting one on one. Okay. One on one with God. I mean, and, really. And I so, mean, you, I, yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. No, you, you, I, I just wanted to say that I, I felt like as if I'm talking with you now. That's how real it was. Okay, and after this experience over here, uh, what you experienced and all that, I guess you know this is like life changing. So oh, life is changing. Yes. You spent three weeks in the coma. Pretty much three weeks, yes. Okay. And then you said you, and uh, how long did it seem like when you were there actually living out this, uh, this experience? Well, it sure didn't seem like three weeks to me. I was, I was told that I was gone for three weeks. But to me, it, it was more like maybe 
three, four, five days. No more. Okay, and now having lived through this experience over here, yeah, and we, of course, uh, Rob, it's it's inevitable. We we all have to go there. We're all going to have to pass on to the other dimension uh, at some other time, uh, whenever the, the time has come. Are you afraid of dying today? Af you know, after having experienced such an amazing experience. Oh my goodness! I guess everybody's a little afraid, you know, but uh, I am less afraid today. Because I know what's ahead of me, I know what to expect, and um, if it is the same, I'll be happy to go. Yeah. Okay. The when you came back, uh, did you come back with a mission? In other words, it's like the the entities who were talking to you. Did they tell you, oh, "Listen"? Uh, go back and do some, do this for us, do that for that. Were you given a mission or was there anything special, any kind of message that was given to you that to relay back to us? I'll tell you the mission. The mission was do nothing. <laughs> just be as you are. Just be. He told me just be. That's all he said. Just be. Okay, and uh, when you came back, uh, did you have a hard time, you know, tell, uh, recounting this experience to some people? Because, you know, we all know that not everybody's very receptive, you know, to, I, to hearing the I, I only things. told my wife about it. I didn't tell many people. Okay. Because I, I, I didn't know how they would react. You know? and, and, and now, and this like happened a while back. Is this like four years ago? Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. 19 uh, 2017 okay and now after all this time that has gone by do you feel you 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 feel like talking about it because i think you are working on some kind of material that is going to be coming up right yeah yeah oh. i'm uh, going to probably work on the near death experience and try to write a bit uh in more detail about it so what's it like do you actually um feel yourself leaving your body and when you're coming back, did you actually, were, did you see yourself on the operating table and seeing all those uh, medical personnel att attending to you? Did you overhear the conversations? No, no. I just woke up. I just woke up and... Uh, and that was it. That was it. I just called out to the nurses. I was in the ICU at the time. And I called out to the nurses to uh, call my wife. To call her and tell her to uh, come and get me. Bring me out of here. <laughs> Get me home. Get well, me you home. woke up and said, just get me home and said, get just me get out of here. Just get me home. Just get me home. <laughs> get me out of here. Wow. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so your your mom here, Edna, says, uh, talk about the farm. Talk about the farm. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> uh, well, we had a um, uh, uh, place out in the country and uh, in Sutton. And... Um, we, uh, we, uh, my dad uh, was very involved with me as far as getting me a, a vehicle. I had a, like this green uh, all-terrain vehicle, which I was able, that he kind of custom built for me. So I was able to go in the woods and go all around uh, on, the, on the farm. And I was able to drive it. It was actually like a motorcycle where I was able to steer it and use my elbow to put the brake on. And use my wrists to turn them the to uh, for the gas, and I would drive through the woods, and I would drive through the swampy areas. I would go all over the dirt roads. I had a great time on that, and uh, yeah, yeah, we had a great time. We had some good laughs there too. Well, you know what? What you're proving tonight, Rob, is that there are no limits. No matter you know if you might have certain limitations. There's nothing that can stop you from actually going out there and accomplishing the, what you want to do. The only limitation you have is your imagination. And if you have a good imagination, I think you can create and do anything that you can think of doing. So what message would you give anybody out there who's uh, going through something similar like yourself? Because you've been uh, uh, in a wheelchair now. It's uh, Is it 55 years, I believe? Yeah, it sure is, yeah. Okay, so what is the message you would like to relay to anybody out there who's going through something similar like you and would like to do things and thinks that he or she is not capable of doing it? What is that 
inspirational push you can give them to say, hey, guys, come giving on. Giving up. Giving up is not an option. Giving up is not an option. There's always hope. There's always a future. And uh, you have choices. It's either go out and be a professional, be accomplished or not. And it's totally up to the individual. I mean, I think that we all have the potential to, to do things and to be um, great or to be not so great. And uh, I decided to be great. I, did, I decided that I was going to live my life to the fullest. Where is it that, you know, okay, you can say, yes, just get up and do it. But that inspiration has got to come from somewhere. And if you just demoralize, you don't have that inspiration. Where is it that you can build this, um, this foundation so that you can actually push yourself to go on and do something? How, my, how my, you... my inspiration came, I've got to be honest, my inspiration came from God. Okay. Okay. And right. I, prayed, I prayed a lot. Uh, when I first got ill, I prayed every day. I prayed every day. I asked for guidance. I asked for strength. I asked for courage. And he gave it to me. Uh, that That's totally inspirational and, and totally amazing, Robert. And uh, wow, that's just, I, you know, I, I'm out of words. I'm inspired myself. You're a real inspiration. And, and you know, just showing everybody tonight that there are no limits, like I said before, you just, you can do anything you want. All you got to do is just put your mind to it. I, I would like to introduce my wife. Yes, you know what? Yeah. Actually, if she's still good, can we bring Pina on here and we'll Absolutely. have her share some of her thoughts with us? Absolutely. Pina, yes, are you Robert. there? Yes, Robert. Hi, here, Rob. Here, Come on down. You're the next <laughs> contestant on <laughs> Rob's I'm Inner Rob's Circle. In circle. Okay. <laughs> Pina, yeah. where, where are you? I'm okay. going to come right right here. There you go. There's the hero. Pina, nice to have you on the show. Nice to be here, Robert. Nice to be here. Thanks for joining. There you go. We see you a little there. bit better right now. There you go. <laughs> okay. Pina, you're married to an absolutely amazing husband. You said it. Uh, so listen, uh, of course, you know, like uh, being in a wheelchair and all that, that brings some challenges. How is it that you have been able to adapt to, to the lifestyle and, you know, to make life better for yourself and for Robert at the same time. You know, um, I don't know whether you can relate to this, Robert. Uh, you may or may not know this, but I'm from an Italian background. Okay. Um, and we're always raised in a way that when someone's in need, you have to lend a helping hand. I can honestly say that uh, my family is very, very large family, very close. And um, growing up, I had my grandparents living with us. Uh, I had an uncle living with us. So, of course, from a very early age, we all had to help out at home, uh, helping the grandparents, grandparents, helping the parents, looking after them. Um, and there was so much love, so much love, compassion, understanding. We were raised with a lot of respect. Um, you know, the only thing I could say is that uh, our religion played a big part as well. Um, from a Catholic background, and uh, I'm I'm a real believer, believer in a, a lot of um, the strength that the Good Lord has given me. Uh, life was not so easy for me before meeting Robert, but things changed. Um, I fell in love and uh, met my real, real soulmate. Um, from the first time I met Robert, I knew that I wanted to live the rest of my life with him. Um, I had a background, a little bit of nursing. I took one semester of nursing. I liked helping people, uh, like taking care of people. Um, so to me, it, it kind of came easy, Robert. It, it wasn't as difficult as maybe for some other people. But, um, and of course, once you love someone deeply, um, there's no restriction. So we were talking about uh, earlier on in the show that you were the inspiration behind Robert writing the book. Are you actually co-authoring this book? 
I am his co-author. Okay. What, what had happened, Robert, is that um, I was diagnosed with uh, an illness in 2007, which I had to stop working for about two years. Uh, during that time, I was so bored and I wanted something to do. And I approached Robert and I said, you know, I have this time available. Uh, I can start writing, typing. You can tell me the stories and I'll just get on the computer and start writing up a manuscript. So together we did it. It took us, it took us about two years to put it together because we self-published it. Um, and uh, I kept saying to him every single day, I kept saying, okay, Robert, what's the topic going to be today? What are we going to talk about today? So we started um, taking notes. We asked Edna uh, information. We asked a lot of people to give input, you know, with some of the things that we weren't sure about. But um, after two years, we finally published it. So um, really, uh, whether I was the, the inspiration, he says I was the inspiration, but I know that in his heart from very, very beginning, he kept saying to me, I want, I really want to do my, my story. I want to tell my story. And I, I, I supported the idea because I said to him, it's wonderful to be able to help so many people out there that need an inspiration. They need something to, to help with, you know, with whatever struggles that they're dealing with on a daily basis. And this is a great story. Okay, so Pina, what is it that inspired you to inspire Robert? <laughs> that's, a, that's a trick question, Robert. <laughs> that's, digging <deep. laughs> yeah, that's digging deep. That's digging deep. I think, I think what it is is um, just the fact that um, knowing that a lot of people struggle every day, um, a lot of people today, when we talk about acts of kindness, we have... Uh, we have dedicated a chapter in the book that's titled Acts of Kindness. Um, so many people that we've encountered uh, during our relationship, everyone has always been there helping us. And I said, you know, maybe it's good to talk about this because random acts of kindness, it, they're blessings. These are blessings. And, and that really inspired me, Robert. That's I think that was the key to um, knowing what my, my inspiration was. Uh, and the same thing goes for Robert. I'm, I'm sure he'll say the same. Uh, do you think enough has been done uh, to make life easier for, the, for people with some physical yes. challenges? I, yes. I personally agree with it. I, I feel they have, you know, coming back to um, what Robert said earlier about the automation in his bedroom, for example, um, can you imagine years ago where, you know, we had to use the remote control to open the TV. Well, actually, even before remote control, you had to actually go to your television set and turn on the knob. And <laughs> so right nowadays, you know, you have the remote control, but for the disabled, they've come up with this technology where it's all voice recognition. Um, Robert is totally independent. He can operate anything in the bedroom, um, lights on, lights off. I, I mean, since this, <laughs> the new invention of Siri, right? With the Apple phone. There you go, um, yeah. You talk to it and it pretty much, you can get it to do almost anything. So um, yes, they, they've improved wheelchairs. They've improved... Uh, transfer lifts for patients. Uh, they've improved, as Robert mentioned, he has a special mattress to prevent the bed sores. So they've improved the type of mattresses that are available now. Don't, don't forget about the transport. And the transport. Well, of course, uh, transport to get around the city that we use transport adapté. Uh, that's incredible. That's a big, big help to a lot door of to people. Door-to-door door door. Door service. Uh, from to get to medical appointments, to get to events, uh, wherever concerts, you need to go, concerts. concerts. Uh, it's it's Parties. Um, it. I say that the technology has uh, helped tremendously uh, for the disabled. That that's really really where I've seen a lot of improvement. Right, Robert? Absolutely. The bus services now have much improved. Uh, they have these uh, lifts. They have ramps. 
that you can just drive up, get in, and the driver will come, and you pay a regular bus fare, and they take you anywhere in the city. Four yeah, yeah. Four. You also winter, have our uh, winter, summer doesn't matter. You also have our uh, the, the metros that are uh, have been mm -hmm. equipped now with. Yes, uh, right. they're starting to equip the metros as well. Yeah. Okay, are there any areas that you think that still needs some improvement? Uh, um, you know. I, okay, Robert. Yes. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna comment on this because I think sure. it's very important. What has been frustrating that's occurred. Uh, for Robert many times um, would be when he is trying to do phone calls where he's okay. on a phone call, whether it's a bank, whether it's a business, um, any type of phone call, they often do not recognize him as Robert Katz. They continuously ask him to repeat his name uh, to identify himself. Uh, because some of quadriplegic patients have a high-pitched voice. Oh, okay. And, uh, you know, many times Robert has tried to do some phone calls that involve a, a business, and he they actually hang up on him because they don't believe he is who he says he is. So Gee, in that area, shame. I think they need to to change. They need to maybe come up with a better way to screen the callers um, that have disabilities, um, because it, it's very frustrating. Are, are you involved uh, with the community, like in some groups, may, maybe uh, offering some help, or are you part of a group, um, you know, that comes together for people with uh, some uh, some disabilities? No, we're not involved yet. Is that something you were looking into eventually? Uh, eventually, I think we, we might consider it. It's just that, sorry, we um, we both are face well, both. I, I recently started to face some health issues, so I need to look after that, um, get myself well enough to be able to take part Um and, and maybe offer some uh, volunteer, okay. you know, get involved in, in a group, but absolutely uh, would consider doing that. Uh, are you aware of La Replique that is in Montreal? No, I'm not. Okay. So that, that's an organization you might want to look into. Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> it's, oh, my God. Time has flown over here. It's, Folks, if you have any last-minute questions, this is the time. Uh, there's a Pina Forte Katz, wife of our guest, and she's our special guest. And and she's the wife of Robert Katz. And there's it's, Robert. <laughs> there he is, the star attraction of the show tonight. Hey. It's been an amazing show. Uh, Robert, uh, we, okay, we're at the closing comments right now. Uh, if the world would be left into your hands, Robert Katz, what is it that you would do to make it a better place? Oh, that's a loaded question. <laughs> uh, I say uh, people need to believe in God more and they need to pray more and um, to have more faith. And I think with faith and, and prayer, we can do anything. Yeah. Robert, it was such an immense pleasure to have you on our show tonight. Pina, you yeah. still there? Yes, I am, Robert. Pina, thank you so much for tagging along. It was nice to see you. It nice was, to meet you both. It thank was you. A pleasure, but we do want to both we do what, both want to say one last thing that we do both thank Jenny. Uh, shout out to Jenny Duhame. <laughs> shout out to uh, Jenny. Yeah, shout out to Jenny. <laughs> Thank you, Jenny, for giving us this opportunity to be on Rob's Inner Circle. Thank you, Rob, for the wonderful uh, program that you have going. Uh, we really, really appreciate uh, your your uh, show, and uh, I'm going to give the mic back to Robert. <laughs> Thank you so much for the compliments. Anybody out there um, that uh, wants to do something uh, more? Uh, I hope that uh, maybe one day to do some kind of inspirational uh, film or maybe a movie. And if there's anybody out there that, uh, that can produce me, uh, <laughs> I'd be willing to not maybe not star in it, but maybe 
uh, help uh, produce, not produce, but help uh, um, write your, your, next uh, your next goal. Well, maybe your next goal, you know, to write a movie. Coincidentally, we have a lot of friends in the film industry. Uh -huh. And they tune in regularly, and I hope they have heard this. If they haven't heard it, <laughs> you know, you can always watch the show afterwards, folks, and share the show. And you heard the call out there by Robert Katz. If yeah. anybody is interested in making Robert Katz story, either a, a TV movie or you want to make it a uh, an epic Hollywood production, <laughs> by all means, reach out to Robert Katz, or you could just reach out to us here at Rob's Inner Circle, and we'll relay the message to our star attraction of the evening, Mr. Robert Katz. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you Robert. And keep Thank on doing what you're doing. Wonderful. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you so much. Both Robert and Tina, we urge you to stay right there. Okay. Okay, because we're going to be signing out and we're going to be coming backstage for a little meet and greet. Just, okay. you know, a little quick hello so you can meet our, uh, sure. our uh, people behind the scenes here. Absolutely. Okay, so thank you guys for uh, being uh, with us, and we'll be with you in a minute. Thank you. Thank you. There you have it, folks. That was our uh, star attraction tonight. Um, author Robert Katz, who's an amazing individual, who's done so much for the community. Uh, he's a, such a, a great individual. So you want to go out and get his book on Amazon.com. It is called Yes, We Can. It's available in hardcover, and it's also available um, softback, the paperback, as they say. Yeah. Uh, we uh, urge you uh, for to tune in to this upcoming Wednesday at the noon hour out of the box, where I'm going to be co-hosting with the amazing Esther Brzezinski, also known as Esther B. And uh, the theme, the topic this time around is going to be dementia. We urge you to follow uh, Rob's Inner Circle on our Facebook page. You want to go check things out over there. You, you stay up to date uh, with all of the new information, all the news coming out. And we also urge you to tune in next week, same place, same time, when we're going to be hosting author, poet, and visual performance artist, Mr. Fortner Anderson. So from Montreal, Quebec, Canada, we are signing out here. We thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll see you next week. God bless.